Hey guys, it's Kevin. Lots of you bought brand new print ads for a replace your old print ads, but you don't realize is the clock doesn't only happen in the print ads. It is also happening in the ink supply system, especially the white inks. And here, Abby going to show you how to clean them out. Hey guys, it's Abby here. In this video, we will be working on the white ink management system, WIMS. First thing I'm doing here is I'm taking off the two white dampers for this printer. As you can see, I did need my dentist tool because the connections with the tubes and the dampers in all places are pretty tight. You can use your dentist tool for about $10 on Amazon. Just get in there in between and pull down a little bit. It loosens the connection and then you can use your fingers to pull it off. Kevin gave me this gray connector piece to put to the two tubes. This way when I clean out, it will push the ink and water through. You can see with these two dampers that there is some white ink that's clogged in there. Here we have a little jerry-rigged cleaning system. The connector Abby showed just go to bchtechnology.com and uh, for go to direct to film DTL parts. And this one-to-one -one manifold will connect your white uh, tubes that the, the two, two tubes do the direct damper management uh, you connect them together so they uh, form a closed loop uh, if you cannot remove the tube to the damper you can just cut it off and eventually get shorter and shorter and i find that the best tube for the damper is this one go to accessories waste tank and this 2.5 millimeter tube is perfect for the white ink for the color ink, I usually use uh, this tube. I go to accessories, tubing. I usually use a 1.8 millimeter A strand tubing for the color ink, not for the white ink. For the white ink, I like be a little bit bigger. The tubing goes to the damper is this accessory waste tank and this 2.5 millimeter tubing that I, that I told you. And the tubing is connected to a tip and uh, this tip is connected to a syringe and the uh, syringe is connected to a, to the bigger tube goes to the faucet at our wash station here so you see here as i push on the membrane right in the middle of the damper it releases the water so really i'm just trying to clean it loosen up any of the ink i'll shake it around a bit but yeah we're just gonna trying to give you an idea here of how we wash out some of the dampers i might use a syringe pull back on some of the ink but you can see there that's where that ink is clogged up down there i'll flip it around shake it tap on it you like i said i'll use a syringe stick it in there give it a drawback pull some of the ink out and spit it back out through the syringe there's multiple ways to clean hook it back up and just trying to give you guys some ways to clean it out now again if it's still too clogged that you cannot do it you can always get a new damper but if you don't want to spend any money and you want to just spend some time cleaning it's pretty fun <laughs> you might get a little wet but again it's pretty fun pretty easy and you just got to work on loosening up the clogged ink the white ink in there and pushing it through to clean the damper all right so we're finished with the dampers and we're coming back <clears throat> to the other colored ink dampers i'm removing those from the carriage area where the print head sits inside here i'm going to work on taking out the print head <clears throat> there should be a few screws in here one two screws and I believe a third screw once you have all three screws out you should be able to lift the print head up now there's two FFC cables but they are both on one side a smaller FFC cable on top and then a bigger FFC cable on the bottom release those two from the print head and your print head is now out of your printer I'll just give you a little look here at the FFC cables. Alright. Open up this 
long side cover here for our ink system. The white is in the back. I've opened up the cover and I'm just going to pour out all of the white ink that is being held in that tank because what we want to do is we want to fill that back up with distilled water and we want to turn it on, we want to turn that system on so it can try to pump distilled water basically through the white ink system. So if you remember in the beginning I took the that gray piece and connected the two tubes at the front where the where it would go to the white dampers so it could circulate through and push this distilled water through. So we've emptied out the white ink. Now we're filling it back up with distilled water. If you have a DTF printer, I suggest you to spend about $100 get a distilled water machine. Not only can supply unlimited distilled water and you can use it for drinking. We're going to go ahead and put the top back on. I imagine to make sure we do that so nothing spills in there. And I'm going to put the rest of my dampers and even the white ink tube connections into a small baggie just so nothing leaks into the carriage area, nothing leaks onto the FFC cables. But yeah. So I had already taken apart the casing to the outside of this printer, but I'm basically going back over the areas where all the screws would be so you know how you can uncase this as well. So this will lift off this top piece. Then we have two side covers, two screws on the side, one down at the bottom in the middle. And then that should lift up and out. Awesome. Now on the back, there was just a bunch of screws down along the bottom side and up above where your power cable goes. There's a couple screws there. Your power cable outlet is going to stay, but the back frame does lift off there. And same thing as with this other side panel. This is going to show where the ink system is and the peristaltic pump taking these screws off. When you want to lift this side piece off, you need to open up this cover that closes over the ink system. So open that up and lift up and out. Alrighty. And then take that back piece off. So now we are totally open to the system. So we see the pump. This is a peristaltic pump and it runs. But if we see that it's running and nothing is being pushed through, we can see in our tubes that it's all just clogged white and the thing is here I'm going to show you on the back so we have it's pretty cool actually there's two ground wires a black one that goes to one side and then a red ground wire that goes to the other side as well then there's this pump at the bottom here my hands on one side my hands on the other side both of the pump and then there's a long red wire that comes from the pump as well that attaches there but you'll see that clock. What's the clock for? Okay. When you push the power on, it runs for 30 seconds. That pump spins for 30 seconds. And then it cuts off. And it will wait for 15 minutes. And then runs, cuts back on for another 30 seconds. And repeat after you get it. So, yeah. Alright. Here again, I'm showing you that even though the pump's on, it's not pushing any of the ink through. You can see that it is pretty stuck, but I had pretty much figured out that all of the white was stuck through all of the tubes. So that was going to be something I needed to work on, was cleaning out all of the tubes, but we were going to start with the peristaltic pump. The way you can take it off of the pump is there's these two push tabs on either side. You should push them in and yank off. Alright, so then you see there's that pump and that little motor. The motor spins, it's like a finger that spins. Now, I'm using the dentist tool to pry the tabs off the back which where they clip in and connect in. You'll hear it clip into the metal part of the printer. If you look back there, the back of the 
pump is still on. So this is the inside of the pump actually, which I think is even cooler to see because then we'll, we're going to get to explain how it works. And this is where I got to see that the pump was also clogged up because the pump has a tube in there. So let's see. You can see here, there's this tube and we have a huge string of just dried white ink in the pump. So we're disconnecting it from the connections. If you need this pump replaced, you can go to bchtechnology.com and uh, search for peristaltic pump. Okay, so here's the back to the pump. Now you remove it and here's the inside of the pump. You can see this tube goes in a U shape up and around the rollers. I'm going to take that tube out and we're going to look again at this clogged white ink in there. And you can see how crazy that is. And it obviously makes sense that nothing would be able to push through if the ink is that clogged up. The way this works though with the motor and the pump is we have the peristaltic pump here with the tube that goes in the U around these three rollers. And in the middle of these three rollers you can imagine the motor with its little finger pushing out going right in the middle of the little triangle in the middle of the three rollers. So when that motor spins on the pump, it's going in that counterclockwise direction and it's pushing the rollers, massaging the tube inside this peristaltic pump, which is going to push the ink in the direction towards the long tubes facing out into the print head, which is how this pump works, which is really cool. So that's the whole reason why we need to unclog this tube is so it can push the ink in the direction we need it to go so yeah that's our work right now is to unclog this um, that I have a long syringe needle I, I tried to use that to just push through this smaller tube um, you can get some water and you can hook it up into a syringe and just push through and the pressure of the water behind that clogged ink might help but you can see here I didn't have it long enough to push it all the way through but you give it a little helping hand with a little bit of current water pressure behind it that should push it through and now we just about have a clean tube into a clean pump and we're just about ready to put that pump back on connect it so we're gonna disconnect that yellow pump which was I only put it there really just to keep my place to know everything now in the beginning when I put this back on, I put it on originally the way the customer had it on and Kevin and I had realized that the best way to keep this pump running is to not have any of the tubes kinked at all. So the way I stick it in is I make the tubes go on the bottom, but really we want the tubes to be facing out to the left to be facing so you can see how the two tubes that have the connections on the bottom are facing down towards the printer we really want them facing towards the yellow ink tank that will not create any kind of kink or stop up in the ink flow so we'll change that later but here again like I said I had to take off all the ink tubes and as you can see that was a huge like strand of clogged white ink and then I was just pushing through water after all the big clogs and replacing them back onto the proper area. It's a little bit of a process, but your tubes still work is the, is the basis of it. Your tubes work, so if you just clean them and put them back on to where they belong, you should get your thing back up and working again. This kind of setup is not really optimal for white ink management and you can see the ink is drawn from the bottom of the tank. That's where usually you get the condensed ink or debris in there. And just follow my channel. I have another video show you how I modify this system. This system is very easy to modify. You can modify it and make a drawing of a little bit higher. And also you can have a secondary printer that helps you to maintain the print head when you have a long vacation or something.
So now I'm working on the tube that leads from the top of the white ink tank all the way going to the print head. It might help if you make a cheat sheet. You can see I have one off to the left of the printer that I help follow. There's going to be two zip ties holding down the tubes on the front of the rail in the printer. You can just follow along, uh, taking them out. And then I found it easy to stop where I was there and use the dental tool to help pry off the connection and then just pull out from there, from the top. And then we have the tube out. So here I am cleaning out that tube again. I'm pushing water behind it and you'll start to see it comes out and it's a little bit easy at first but then you can see my hand shaking with that tube because I'm pushing pretty hard and there's an ink clog in it so it's not going to come out much. That's where I had to start pulling. I don't think I got it on camera but a trick that I found that was easier was I just used a smaller syringe. I don't think I put any water in there at all. I just puffed, puffed, puffed air through it small puffs and that ended up pushing it through a lot easier. Now I'm just trying to weave the tube that I had cleaned out, no more clogged ink. I'm trying to weave it back through the two zip ties and back through this black, I don't know what that is, <laughs> but I'm trying to weave it back through so I can get it up to the print head. It's hard because it goes in and out of those holes. But anyways, once you get it up there, you're going to want to connect it back to your connection piece. And then you want to run it through the bottom. And find your pump. Again, I still have not moved it to the other side. I haven't taken that pump off and flipped it to the right facing way. Now here, this is all the dried ink that I had collected. Is that crazy or what? It's pretty crazy. That's all the dried ink that was in the tubes that I had cleaned out. You can do that if I can do it. <laughs> and it's really fun to touch. It really is. It's a weird consistency. All right, pull the tube through. I found it's easier if it sits down through that tube. Let's see, have I changed? Okay, yep, now look here. You'll see that I have changed the direction. Rewind it a little bit if you need to, but you can see that I changed the direction of the pump. Here I was trying to clean out the colored ink. Since I had done all the white tubes, I wanted to clean out the colored ink. I had done good with all the colors. I was putting in distilled water. Like you can remember from the beginning of the video, we did that with the white. Put in distilled water and we draw it through to try to flush it. But you could see here that this damper, I, couldn't, I could not pull through any ink because that damper was, had a lot of clogged ink in it, um, so I had to take off the pieces to the damper, and that's where it has that little black kind of gasket and the metal um, screw on, but I took off the damper and I just attached a syringe and pulled through the tube. It was working well that way. I got up to all of them basically, and you'll see here that maybe I was able to pull through this one, but no, the magenta was not a good one for me. I took the damper off of it, I unscrewed the metal, and I pulled off that black piece and disconnected it. I think even when I used the syringe to connect with the um, actual tube, I don't even believe that was working for me because that as well was clogged. So let's give that a look. Here we sell brand new uh, print heads and uh, it's like $400. Lots of people, after they buy the print head, they say like, why one after they install it, it doesn't work. Yeah, have you cleaned up your wetting system? So I was having a pretty hard time pulling anything back, really. It just was a lot of pressure, and I remember pushing my fingers down on the tubes to try to, I was really trying to push ink through to see if it could break it up any, but it really wasn't, and I wasn't sucking ink through the same way it just seemed like little bits of water were coming through around it but when I looked at the ink tank itself it's it seemed that there was more 
dried ink possibly in the actual tubes itself i tried to disconnect the actual tube from the bottom of the tank to see if i could clean it out another way since i had been such on a kick for cleaning tubes you know what i mean so let's see i tried to pull it from this end but i really got nothing so you could tell that was really clogged you can see here there's the inks the three the four inks i'm sorry four inks and i'm pushing water from one end into this cup down at the bottom and it's pushing water through a little bit but it's really not cl cleaning anything that really wasn't working i then tried to switch it also to the other side yeah you see the water's coming through but it wasn't really cleaning any of the tubing and i think we did the same with the other side i tried to switch it to the other side but it really wasn't cleaning anything if you need a repla replacement for the color tube, uh, you can just go earlier of the video, I show you where to get it. And it's a strand, so you can tear it off. And so basically you get it doubled. You only need a four strand. And also the customer asked us to replace the tank. And you can notice earlier the tank is not that great. And I highly suggest use a smaller volume, 75 mil tank. And you can go to bchtechnology.com and go to accessories and the ink tank. I know lots of companies sell you those giant big uh, ink tank. It look awesome, but uh, if you like me, I'm only printing maybe 40 t-shirts uh, per order. I don't need uh, that big tank. And uh, with a big tank, you can hold all those ink inside those tank for a long time. It's better to just do smaller batch and keep your ink inside the bottle. So in this video, we just replaced, the, replaced with this uh, four color tank and uh, you can choose a black or a white. I think I have a red one somewhere. Yeah, I'm going to list the red one. Uh, so those are 75 mil tank and they work perfectly. And also it comes with a tube so you don't have to mess with the tubes. So we ended up replacing the four white tubes with the colored ink. It's pretty easy to put it back through. The four white tubes sit in the middle of the two white tubes on the outer side. Should be pretty easy to follow through um, they just lead through the two zip ties leading all the way up and to the where the print head would go so I hope this was helpful in learning a bit about the white ink management system we also talked a little bit about the colored ink uh, anyways see you in the next video happy printing everyone okay I hope you enjoyed this video with please visit us www at bchtechnology.com or locally at Greensboro, North Carolina. Cheers! There was a time not long ago when printer cartridges were so expensive. So expensive. And BCH came out to play. The quality cartridges saved the day. Oh, oh, oh. Technology.